Toby's Student Expert Podcast. On this platform, Toby will engage with student experts, their field of study, passions and interests. Meu nome é Bernardo Romagnoli Betônico. Meu campo de estudo é o corpo e minha expertise é a dança e a escrita. Hello listeners. I'm your host Toby and welcome to the fourth episode of the Student Expert podcast. I went to a screening of three LGBT films at the Markgate Arts Club a while back. The films were the art film Busy by Thomas Jefanovus, an artist and graphic designer who I'll be interviewing. Just May Does Jerry featuring Pete May, a drag artist who has a passion for Jerry Halliwell and who's also agreed to be in my podcast. The third film is Lucy, My Transgendered Life. I hope to be interviewing Lucy and the filmmakers at some point in the future. However, the film is very popular, so there's not much chance soon of uh, engaging with them. At the screening, I engaged in conversation with Bernardo, who at the time was writing notes in a small book in between films. He introduced himself in his native Portuguese as a student of the body and of an expert of dancing and writing. The interesting thing is how he got to this stage. So please enjoy. Can you talk a little bit about why the body and that expertise? Yeah, so I, I come basically <coughs> from literature and linguistics studies where I developed some kind of um, image of myself that was completely out of the body. Let's say it that way because um, it was only about uh, reading things intellectually and when I started to read a writer called Maria Gabriela Lianso, I changed uh, my relationship with language and started to have this um, inspiration about the body. This was during my master's course and it's something that has nothing to do with um, the, the academic way of uh, approaching literature <coughs> and um, it was more about while I was reading Gabriela I started to dance okay and uh, I started a um, six month intensive formation course in uh, artistic research that it was a lot about uh, somatic techniques and uh, dancing it was more about creating this course with the body with movement mm -hmm. um, so this is why I live in Lisbon now because I'm with this group this collective called uh, Centro in Movimento, mm -hmm. which is basically, basically Centro in Movement. So you said that this woman's writing changed your relationship with language, is that yeah. right? How did she change your relationship with language? I had very different feelings. I could feel fear or I could feel like angry or then I could feel um, that I was really in touch like if someone was talking to me like we are talking now mm -hmm. like if, if she was present really really intense contact uh, with something that was 
always in movement and this was her way of writing if you go to her books um, you find like a mixture of um, historical figures she puts these figures in her everyday life but in a way that they are not exactly historical they are not characters she refers to this historical figures as figures not as characters they, and she she defines figure as something that it's always mutating she doesn't write exactly stories it's more the uh, like the the course of life yeah many books she she called them diaries but um, I think it's all one big writing and she does this um, game calling some books diaries just to have this I don't know evocation of the gen genre yeah, yeah but I never thought I would do a, a, a thesis about this text because it was something that I couldn't like catch I, I couldn't understand <laughs> right. but I kept reading it was more like comprehensible through the the you know when you have a door that is not exactly opened and mm. you see only this yeah. part you, you don't see completely mm. but she's not interested in showing things uh, completely it's her technique in doing that more than others yeah she has a, a when she received a, a, it was a, a grant called Europalia she received for one of her books she did this discourse which is called uh, para que o romance não morra literally is uh, for the romans not to die she's interested in renewing the contact between the reader and the writer but not as reader and writer it's, she she refuses these categories and she uses different words in portuguese like in portuguese reader you say leitor and she uses legente which has the same root but it's um, the, the suffix she uses is um, a negative one like highlighting the active aspect of the reader through this word but more like in the sense of the encounter not uh, as someone who arrives <laughs> in the text and uh, starts and starts to interp interpret that. So, are you saying that the way she writes is is to have a kind of direct relationship between the reader and the writer? Yeah, not only in discourse, but uh, there you can find some some definitions but she's not interested in the abstract reader um, I don't know what she's interested in but uh, the text mm -hmm. is not interested in the abstract reader uh, it, it invites the reader to, to read as a, a gesture not as interpretation but uh, there this is my way of being with this text can I pose something then? Sure. I assume you know of Roland, Roland Barthes, The Death of the Author? Yeah. So, in relation to this discourse, is it a response to anything like that? Or is, is it just her own expression? Is she responding to any, any notions of what the author and the reader are? Yeah, you can do such relations... Um, by reading her texts. It's more um, about getting in touch with language. Mm -hmm. So I think Barth is more interested in saying that the author is dead 
and then we can read him or her in the way we want. But what you're saying is that the relationship that she's having with her writers, her readers, sorry, is more immediate. She's engaging directly with, with her readers. That's what yeah. you're saying. Some kind of uh, strange community mm -hmm. uh, formed like through this language. Mm -hmm. And she puts uh, Nietzsche, uh, Munze, Thomas Munze. Oh, okay. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, he was like a revolutionary priest who inspired a lot of, um, of people to, uh, like, uh, to rebel themselves against the church and the oh, was the middle age. Is that what I, oh, in the middle ages? Yeah. Right. And Emily Dickinson. And these are people that are within the discourse? Yeah, they are within the discourse. Portuguese poet Fernando Pessoa also. I don't know, I, I don't think I should be talking about Yansol this way. I no. didn't want to make an introduction to her work. <laughs> and I ended up doing this. So if we go back to your field of study, so the body. She was the one that got you started in kind of changing your relationship to language. Yeah, and she Language or writing or both? Language and writing. Because in this text, reading is very close to writing in the sense that you have to give yourself an experience. I think Maria Gabriela is radical um, in the sense that she puts this um, rupture in the form of the text. When you look at this, at her words, it's like a full of um, empty, empty places in the page and then suddenly you can have some description uh, more like romance or traditional narrative but everything gets connected uh, through some kind of um, how do you say this like when you have thread, thread yeah. um, that depends on you Oh, and this was um, I felt that this text was talking to me mm. yeah. <laughs> this thread was there for me to pull it when, when she's writing a text do, do you see a clear beginning and a clear end it sounds like she's doing it some, doing something different with the with the historical figures and with them changing their names within the text that's not a that's not a text that you can read a clear narrative from one one side to the other how does she put those in, in the text so they are more like um, <coughs> intensities that get into the, the images she's calling to the text. Right. And sometimes you can't actually know that, for example, Pessoa is in Fausta. In Fausta is a feminine uh, figure that is Pessoa. It's not different. They are the same. The same. Okay. But uh, you Maybe. can only know that reading other books. But she's not interested in this kind of uh, How do you know they're the same character? Most of the times you will not know. 
That's right. very radical, I think. I, I, I discovered that reading the critics. Okay. But the image, the, the intensity, uh, the experience mm. is there, even if you don't know. Mm. And she puts um, she puts an end in the book, but it's not. Um, it's like the figures. She she doesn't want them to be dead or to have a, a traditional biography. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know the the book of the mutations, the I Ching, Chinese? Oh, uh, the I Ching, I Ching, the Tao Te Ching. Yeah, Lao Tzu. Yeah. yeah. I Ching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in Portuguese, we have a subtitle that is like the mu mutations book. So something that became an image for me when I worked in Lensol's archive when I was doing uh, the master's course is that she, she never talks about I Ching in, in her work mm -hmm. but the I Ching was uh, her pillow book okay. and this was a very strong image for me <laughs> to understand this this care she has with death with some historical figures and some some writers um, in the sense of being mutants you know she 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 wants uh, reading to be um, renewing gesture. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, what I've learned from the I Ching myself, the I Ching says that the, you you must go with the way. So you must, instead of trying to to move a boulder like water, you go around the boulder. Um, you don't you don't change things. And I think that is true, actually, that um, if there is the connection with the I Ching and these historical figures, what I'm seeing from what you're saying is that she is, um, she recognises the, the change in relationship to whole historical figures. Yeah. So at one point, kings and queens from Portugal, Italy, Spain, Britain, through the passage of time, you, the relationship with that historical figure changes and continues to change. Um, particularly in today's climate where, we, where news is so easily accessible. So I suppose with modern media, the relationship to public historical figures can change almost instantly. Yeah. And I think what inspires this writing is that the Lian is focused is focused on the gesture that the figures she's chosen mm. uh, as as something to be like continued, you know, mm -hmm. not uh, the. To be like uh, worshiping the legacy, mm -hmm. but to consider the gesture and how can you honor it somewhere, somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and what I see really uh, radically in what is what she's doing in these books is to invite the reader to be in this movement with her. Mm. What I felt really intensively. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I arrived to Portugal in 2009, 
I I have already have read like three books of Lin So mm -hmm. in my undergraduate course with the crazy teacher. Mm. <laughs> But I had this uh, mixture of fascination and fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't really propose to write about this text in a thesis. Okay. But then I met these people from Spasulian So, which is her archive. Uh, th they are uh, um, publicating her posthumous works. Posthumous. Yeah, uh, posthumous works. And. And they they are organizing the things she she left, and I started to work in there and to read um, the letters she received. It was not the the letters she she wrote. It was the the letters that were there in her house of. Uh, readers, uh, critics, academics, mm. and I started to see, like from another side, mm -hmm. because I was only organizing the letters, but I, I, I was organizing by subject, and uh, I had this close relationship with the way people were reading the mm. text yes. like since the 70s mm -hmm. and it, that was really um, something that touched me in the sense that 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 body that Maria Gabriela Maria, Maria Gabriela Lianso, she was um, insisting in this writing mm. she was really insisting okay. <laughs> she yeah. was not interested in uh, um, in likes <laughs> yeah. let's say um, And then I started to see like this small community that was gathering around this text mm. and sometimes very close community like mm. sometimes you can see it as a church or oh, okay. like it's small groups that have their you can see it in every every writer's work like yeah, yeah. people defending their their way of reading the text okay and uh, people following the, mm. these ones who are defending but uh, this didn't uh, change the my interest in what I was hearing mm -hmm. in her writing the body not as an abstract subject or uh, uh, like a biological field of study uh, the body as an experience mm -hmm. uh, That for me started with language. Mm -hmm. So um, parting from my reading Ma of Maria Gabriela Lianso, I started to read other things more, more or less like in the atmosphere that I started to garden there so were you were you told about this work or were you did you just investigate yourself all the writings yeah no I, I was like even things that I read before her mm -hmm. I could reread it and 
get other things like from the atmosphere that I found in your soul mm. and it was actually really about the body mm -hmm. and the body as a um, as something happening mm -hmm. as something always changing yeah as something that uh, is not exactly the way you want or the way you want it to be mm. uh, and how do you create a relationship with this mm. like not as something you discover only when you get hurt or mm -hmm. uh, you have some serious issue with it but something you can discover in tiny details um, like this <laughs> this body and how can you document it? Mm -hmm. Not only through writing or even taking photos is something that also interests me, not as a photographer, but as someone who is trying to create some, uh, some intensities. We are always starting with the body. Something that is always in a, in a constant uh, renewing and upward. It was Bernardo's introduction as a writer that inspired me to ask him for an interview. His retelling of the effect that Maria Gabriela Lienzo's writing had on him intrigued me, and I loved his response to Roland Barthes, the death of the author. Whatever the truth about the relationship between the author and their readers, it's clear that Bernardo believes that Lienzo has a direct relationship with their readers and had a profound effect on him. At the same screening, I also met Sailor drag artist, writer, musician, LGBT campaigner, and comparative literature expert, Tommy Poppers. In his episodes, starting on the 15th of October, he speaks about gothic writing of the fin de siècle, engages with politics, international attitudes to gender, and the creative artistry of the LGBT communities. Art is a form of communication for Tommy, so please listen out for him. Reviews for all these artists appear on my WordPress page that accompanies this podcast. Please like, subscribe and share from all of my social media sites, especially iTunes, Podbean and YouTube. You'll find the links to them on the show notes that accompany this podcast. It remains for me to say thank you to Bernardo and to you the listeners. And I'll see you next time.